What's going on guys and welcome to the next crack -a pack episode. Today we are opening up a fairly recent set, uh, Rivals of Ixalan. Uh, a set that I've actually opened way too much of already, so it kind of sucks to open this on this series, but uh, some people really like seeing standard sets, so I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, sitting at the top of the value side of things, we have Rekindling Phoenix, just under $30 on Card Kingdom. Uh, pretty fantastic actually. And then under that we have things like the Immortal Sun, uh, Galta, Primal Hunger, and uh, a few of the other just random off cards. The comma obviously is in there. Uh, so hopefully we get something really, really good. Obviously we are gonna look at this from a draft environment. So we're gonna do the best we can to determine what our pack one, pick one would actually be. Uh, I may get things wrong. I may not have the best pick, but feel free to disagree with me in the comment section below. I am of course open to that. So let's go ahead and get into this. Our first uh, common is a Rozka Raptor. It's a 3-4 for 2 and 2 red. Uh, not very exciting, in my opinion, very filler, uh, but actually playable in this set. Uh, still not very good. Uh, Moment of Triumph, 1 white for an instant. Target creature gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn, and you gain 2 life. This is actually a great combat trick. Uh, there's some good life gain synergies in this set, uh, and actually giving plus 2, plus 2 for just 1 white mana is pretty good. Uh, still probably wouldn't want to first pick it by any means. Uh, speaking of means, Sailor of Means. So a 1-4 for 2 and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, create a colorless treasure, treasure token. Uh, with tap it and sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Uh, there was actually a very, like, weird, uh, draft deck that was based around this card. You just pulled, like, as many of these as you could. Outside of that, I don't think it's all that good. Uh, so I would not be picking that. <laughs> Uh, Jade Light Artisan is a 3-3 three, three for 3 and a green. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. Uh, this is a great card in a blue-green uh, strategy, most likely, because uh, ideally in this set, there's blue-green, which is basically merfolk. Uh, you play a lot of really cheap, uh, try, and to, try to make them unblockable, and then just power them up. Uh, so, so far, that's actually kind of up there as far as the card I would pick. Uh, though this card's great too, Dusk Legion Zealot is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a black. Doesn't sound too great, but when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and you lose a life. Uh, so you do sort of get the vampire synergy, but you also get to replace it. Uh, I think just on raw level, this card is great. Uh, but I also think the Artisan's good too, so we'll see what else we get. Uh, Overgrown Ar Armasaur is a 4-4 four, four for 3 and 2 green with Enrage. So whenever uh, it's dealt damage, create a 1-1 one, one green Sapperling creature token. Uh, I think this kind of beats out the other two cards just by a bit. Uh, generally speaking, it's going to deal some... You can either use it as a blocker uh, and hopefully get a little bit of extra value, or uh, it's going to be kind of a one-shot wonder kind of thing, and you're either going to attack in and it's going to get killed, or you're going to block and they're going to have a combat trick, something like that. Uh, because this definitely paints a target on its back that you want to kill it in one shot. Uh, that being said, though, it is pretty good uh, if it is burnt in any sort of way. Uh, obviously, you still get the 1-1 one, one green sapperling. Uh, so for that reason, I really do like that card. Uh, Tilanali's Crown is 1 and a red for an enchant, an enchant creature. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it, it deals 1 damage to the enchanted creature. Uh, and then that creature gets plus 3, plus 0, and has Trample. This would actually be really synergistic with the Armasaur, but in general, I don't like this card. Uh, there are actually decks with Enrage, specifically, where this becomes a little bit better because you can generate some extra value. Uh, but I generally don't like Enchanted Creatures anyway, uh, so you really, really have to have a good payoff for that one. Uh, Squire's Devotion is 2 and a white for an Enchant Creature. The creature gets plus one, plus one, and has lifelink, and when it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one vampire creature token with lifelink. Uh, this is a card that I actually do like. It spits out a token, so it's not going to be as bad if the enchanted creature gets removed, because at least it gives something left behind. Uh, the card itself is sort of a two-for-one in value, so you're actually getting uh, power on one creature and then another body. Uh, it also, the lifelink is pretty important sometimes in limited. Uh, generally speaking, I don't like the mechanic, but in limited, it can actually save you against a lot of aggro decks. Uh, not only that, but it also has vampire synergy, which is great. Uh, I don't think I like it more than the Armasaur still. Uh, Dead Eye Rig Hauler is a 3-2 for 3 and a blue with Raid, so uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you attacked with a creature this turn, you may return target creature to its owner's hand. Uh, it was sort of a Grixis Pirate deck that was big in this set. Uh, this card is fantastic in that deck, and in fact, I kind of like this more uh, than the Armasaur. 
just hugely, hugely powerful to be able to bounce something. It's a great tempo play. Uh, that might be an incorrect pick, but so far that's definitely mine. Uh, Shatter is a very classic card. One in a red for an instant destroy target artifact. Nothing wrong with a good sideboard card. Uh, definitely not something you'd be looking to first pick by any means, but there are some equipments and things like that that you might want to take out. Uh, and so being able to side a card like this in is definitely, definitely useful. Uh, Thunderherd Migration is a sorcery for one in a green. As, a, a, as an additional cost to cast it, uh, reveal a dinosaur card from your hand or pay one. Uh, then search your library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped and shuffle your library. Uh, this is fine in a green-red like ramp dino deck. The green-red deck tends to be the one that's more rampy uh, instead of the white-red deck, which is a little bit more aggro uh, based. Uh, this card's fine in that. I wouldn't want too many copies uh, only because it's really not doing anything, right? It's ramping you, but there's no immediate value. Uh, and you don't want too many cards drawn throughout the game where it's just like here ramp 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 and then never actually get to anything. Uh, so I don't like I don't mind this card by any means, but I wouldn't first pick it. Uh, Slippery Scoundrel is a two two for two and a blue with ascend. So if you have ten or more permanents, uh, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game, and that can never be taken away. Uh, and as long as you have the city's blessing, this card has hexproof and can't be blocked. Uh, this is also a really good card. Most of the time you're going to get to the City's Blessing, especially in Limited. Uh, it's a little bit of a slow format sometimes, depending on the decks you're against. Uh, and so 9 times out of 10, you'll probably get there. I like this up there with the Rig Hauler. Uh, maybe even more. Uh, the next card, Reaver Ambush, uh, an instant for 2 and a black exile target creature with power 3 or less. This card is fantastic. It's great removal. Uh, it leaves you open to a lot of different decks, so you could go into Pirates, you could also go into Vampires. Uh, I might like this card a little bit more than both of the others, only because they leave you a little bit less open. Uh, but we'll see what our rare is. Release to the Wind. Uh, an instant for two and a blue. Exile target non-land permanent. For as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may cast it without paying its mana cost. I do not like this card in Limited at all. Uh, it's really just kind of a bad card. So for me, it's between these three, um, and to be honest, I could see a very good argument for any of them. I think it's really between these two. Uh, the Ray Collar is great as well, but uh, I think these two have a little bit more upside. Uh, for me, I'd probably go Reaver Ambush just because it seems like the safer pick. Uh, that being said, this card is also fantastic. Slippery Scoundrel is great. It's just not as good in the late game necessarily. If, if they sweep or do something like that, it still can die. Uh, and two damage late game hopefully can poke through the last few points of damage, but there's a lot of instances where uh, you might actually just have to leave that up to block. So a straight uh, removal spell seems a little bit better to me. Uh, by all means, please correct me if you feel like I am wrong in the comment section below. I am happy to hear about it. Uh, but with that, I'm going to get out of here. Excuse me. Guys, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below if you enjoyed this episode. And if you really enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, but I am going to end this episode. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next Crackaback video.